pleased to have John Sosoka join us for seminar. Um, as the Chief Technology Officer of UFO, he is responsible for the technical direction of this innovative com company and for running their research and development group. Prior to Yagobi, John co-founded and acted as CTO at Neurosmith, a Long Beach, California company that builds interactive learning toys for children as young as one year old. Neurosmith develop, develops toys for children that encourage the drive to explore, experiment, create, and relate to others. Applying his experience, accomplishments, and vision to Yagobi, John and his interdisciplinary team of designers, scientists, and engineers have developed their first commercial product, Leo, a state-of-the-art AI-equipped automata presented in the form of an adorable animatronic baby dinosaur. Okay. And according to Cleo's inventor, Kayla Chan, um, we are designing our children's best friends, so there is a social responsibility we have as designers to teach empathy and love. So we're thrilled to have John Sasoka share his knowledge and experience, the pleasures of Cleo, and perhaps also his thoughts on design and social responsibility in us today. Thank you. So my, my uh, friend and co-founder of Adobe, Kayla, couldn't, couldn't make the trip down here, but he's going to try to Skype in in a little bit. Um, what I wanted to talk about was um, looking at, looking at life forms as, a, as another medium for development. It's, it's really, really interesting to me, of course, that's why I'm spending all of my waking hours doing this stuff. But, but, but there is something that is, you know, I spent lots of time doing game development and doing, doing, doing uh, educational products, doing laser interferometer spectrometers, working on the brake system for Boeing 767, all kinds of stuff. But um, there's something that's magical about things that exist in the physical world, things that you can touch and feel and interact with. And one of the things when, when we were doing a lot of uh, game development was you'd build these great characters, but they were always trapped behind the glass. You couldn't take them out and play with them. And, and so this has been, it's been really fun to be able to take a lot of the challenges from game development and, and bring them into physical form. So a lot of times I refer to, to Cleo as just a really horrendously complex non-player character. It's really interesting when you go back and you look at technology through that lens. And instead of thinking about what could I get the technology to do, you start to think about what is it like to interact with, to interact at that level, at the level <coughs> of a, a well-trained dog or a well-trained horse. And how does that differ from the way we, we deal with our technology?
the next thing, oh, well, much higher on the evolutionary scale, we, we try to do a dinosaur. Two reasons. One is, one, one is that uh, dinosaurs um, are kind of a, uh, um, if you think of brand, uh, uh, they're kind of an evergreen uh, property. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to uh, pay money to Disney for E.R. or something. You don't have to come up with something new. You already have a following with dinosaurs. The next thing is um, they're impossible. Uh, I mean, you can't have a baby dinosaur. The idea of having a Pleo, a baby dinosaur, uh, was, was to have uh, as close to a, a clone of a baby dinosaur as we could, uh, which is very different than saying I'm going to make uh, a model of a 50-foot or 80-foot or 100-foot dinosaur. There's, there's one uh, less degree of separation. So if you think about it, when you cradle Pleo and, 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 and you hug him, you can really let your imagination believe that, it's a, that it is a one-to-one, -one, it's really there. If it were a, uh, a T-Rex, uh, you know, and, and it was a model of an 80-foot dinosaur, you would only be able to play with them with army men, right? It doesn't, it's not in scale. So we're really trying to, to, to make something that, that, you know, we can't do it with biology yet, so let's do it with, with this, with, with, with motors. It is this thing, and there's a lot of really people stuff. We didn't build Leo to, to be an impressive tech piece of technology. What we wanted to do was we wanted to build a platform for exploring what it means to interact with something that's a, a caricature, but a caricature of a life of something that's alive. Is, uh, really, if you look in the future and, and, and you say, well, you know, eventually these things, you know, 10, 20, 30 years in the future, they're gonna, they're gonna act and feel exactly like real. They're, they're going to have memories, they're going to have uh, all these things we see in science fiction books uh, or in movies, and, and someday people are going to ask, well, do they have souls? And my hope is the answer will be yes, they have ours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you both. Thank you both very much for... Uh